Greetings everybody, it's your old pal Frank here, and happy Saturday. So folks, yesterday Adidas released their designs for the new 2022 NHL Reverse Retro jerseys. And I gotta admit, some of them are pretty damn cool. And then others are kinda meh. But I figured, before tackling those, it would be fun to go back to 2020 and rank the original reverse retro jerseys. So, without further ado, let's get to it. So kicking off our list, we have the Nashville Predators. And let me just start off by saying, well, someone's gotta be last, right? <laughs> and it's not as if we hockey fans loathe the reimagination of the 1998 original. I mean, the adjustments to the numbers, the striping, and crest are a really nice touch. And even the silver sleeve is a, is a nice enough spark, but there, there are just too many other good ones to really give the Preds much attention. Next, and I'm sure if Silver Zero Breaks was to watch this video, he wouldn't appreciate how far down the list I'm ranking his team, but we have the Anaheim Ducks. And upon further review, we don't like Wild Wing as much as we thought. <laughs> Though it stands strong amid a collection of interesting third jerseys in NHL history, it just doesn't compare as well with some of the other reverse retros that teams have come up with. So, sorry Anaheim, but we'll always have 1995, right? Ah, good old Arizona Coyotes. Another different strokes for different folks bit. Now, a lot of people really seem to be high on the uh, color swap version of Arizona's Desert Scene alternate jersey from 1999 with purple subbing for green. Myself, not so much. Though, there is a lizard shoulder patch, a phrase not often uttered by professional apparel designers though. Spot 28 brings us our first Canadian team, the Calgary Flames. And ah, to be in 1998 again, this one recalls the arrival of the Horsehead as the main logo on the team's first third jersey, which was the first time a Calgary uniform was without a flaming C. Also, the design was the team's home look in the early 2000s, and it supposedly celebrates the city's Western culture. Myself, I call meh. I mean, yeah, sure, the horse head and everything, you automatically think of the Calgary Stampede and whatnot, but I'm sure there were a lot of other things that could have been chosen. Next, we got the Dallas Stars, and there's a lot to like about the 1999 jersey from which this reverse retro design takes inspiration from. Uh, it was the primary jersey for the team when it won its lone Stanley Cup, and the look was borrowed from all-star game uniforms in the 1980s. But the white base color just reeks of a practice jersey look. Now from Dallas, we move on to the Pittsburgh Penguins. And once again, even at 26th, it's not as if this one's dreadful. I mean, Mario Lemieux wore it in 1997 on the way to winning his sixth NHL scoring title, and Snoop Dogg gave it some crossover street cred in the hip-hop arena. But like Dallas before it, the look was way better in black than the modern white take. All right, cracking the 25 spot, we have the Detroit Red Wings. Well, I will say this. It's got plenty of pedigree behind it. This one was inspired by the jerseys worn in the 1998 Stanley Cup winning season. 
and by the franchise's Centennial Classic looks as well. And even though the logo remains classic, the white base and gray striping, to me anyway, is just too bland to support the iconic mark. Next, we got the Columbus Blue Jackets and Raven, if you're watching this, I apologize. I know Columbus is your team now, but um, yeah. So I guess we could say things are trending up in terms of color at least. I mean, this take on the Blue Jackets 2000 jersey uh, recalls the franchise's original logo and places it in the middle of the club's first try at a primarily red jersey. The base color and striping is good, but somehow I find the logo just looks too, I don't know, busy and cartoony. Spot 23 gives us our first of the original six teams, the Boston Bruins. Now, if you like tradition with your retro reverses, this one will probably be a bit higher. Uh, basically, it reinvents the team's classic white jersey that was worn by the likes of Cam Neely and Ray Bork when the Bruins battled for the Stanley Cup in 1988 and 1990. Basically, with this one, the white goes yellow and the bearhead logo shoulder patch arrives. So spot 22 gives us the other team from New York, the New York Islanders, and I got to admit, I'm, I'm a bit conflicted here. <laughs> uh, a lot of list makers have panned this one because it's basically unchanged from what already exists, and I don't disagree. It it looks very plain Jane to what the Islanders are already wearing. But, considered on its own merits, it's still a beauty and honors the start of the Islanders dynasty that, don't forget, yielded four straight Stanley Cups. So for spot 21, we're staying in the state of New York and we get to the Buffalo Sabres. So, this color change-up on the Sabres black and red alternate jersey from 2000 was chosen from more than 50 design concepts. And it basically flips those colors to the current blue and gold mix, which is fine. But considering the classic look Buffalo wore in its first decade in the league after arriving in 1970, I'm sure a better pick was out there. All right, folks, we're in the top 20 now, and we kick things off with the Florida Panthers. Ah, John Van Beesbrook, Scott Mellenby, plastic rats being thrown onto the ice. Ah, the good old days of Panthers hockey from the mid-1990s. This jersey wakes up the echoes from the franchise's 1996 run to the Stanley Cup Final, including palm tree-inspired graphics and pointed stripes on the sleeves. Ah, what a beaut! Next up, we have the San Jose Sharks. And I gotta admit, I got really close to falling head over heels for this one. And if you're my good buddy Undisputed Frost, you're probably going, well, why the hell didn't you? <laughs> but in the end, I decided to just keep it at a, um, a casual infatuation, if you will. So this look resembles the Sharks' first crack at a third jersey from 1998, with an introduction of a stylish gray as the base color along with black, white, and teal accents. And I gotta say, you know, some may, may look at this jersey and say, eh, it looks kind of bland. Me? No. I look at it and I say, it's simple and it works. 
No, folks, we're not going back to New York. In fact, we're crossing the bridge and heading into the next state, New Jersey. That's right, Spot 18 gives us the New Jersey Devils. And I got to admit, the Devils fully embraced the uh, reverse retro spirit and really made a wholesale change with this one. Uh, adopting green as a primary jersey color for the first time after it had only been used previously as a complement. Now the red honors the mythical Jersey Devil for whom the franchise is named, and the green represents where it resided. So in spot number 17, we're heading to the nation's capital, folks. That's right, we got the Washington Capitals. A franchise only briefly removed from a 2018 Stanley Cup championship merged its successful 1997 run in terms of logo and lettering with the colors worn by the title winning bunch three seasons back. Now for this jersey, close your eyes and imagine the likes of Olaf Kolzig and Peter Bondra modeling this sucker off for you. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, ouais, mesdames et messieurs, dans la place 16, les Canadiens de Montréal. <laughs> That's right, folks. In spot number 16, we got the Montreal Canadiens. So, fans of a certain vintage will remember the 1976 origins of this jersey. Worn by a team that won four consecutive Stanley Cups to close out the decade. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> now, the base color red is swapped out for blue here, which, believe it or not, does more harm than good. However, it's tough to improve on a classic. And see, no favoritism here. I put the Habs, my hometown Habs, at spot number 16. You guys probably thought I was going to put them first, didn't you? Didn't you? For shame. <laughs> so for those of you who are still here, welcome. And welcome to the halfway mark of our list. So for spot number 15... We got the Tampa Bay Lightning with a reverse retro jersey that celebrates the two most successful seasons in Lightning history. Uh, the logo basically walks things back to Tampa Bay's first championship in 2004, while the base color blue is a tribute to the look displayed for cup number two. Hey, that rhymed. <laughs> Way to go, Frank. <laughs> so for spot 14, here we have the Vancouver Canucks. And let's face it, the Canucks are a franchise with a sometimes suspect jersey history. But this one, I think, shows real progress. The original 2001 look from which it borrows was primarily red and blue. But this one's blue-green mix is reflective of the team's existing color variations. Spot number 13, and we're going back to New York. And call it a coincidence, but there also just so happens to be a certain first round overall draft pick who wears number 13 and plays for this team. We won't name names, will we, Slappy? <laughs> but yeah, the New York Rangers take spot number 13, and it's hard to argue with the Statue of Liberty logo. I mean, I remember when this first came out, and I was like, oh, that is cool. I mean, the Rangers have brought her back for the first time since 1996, though the overall package has been updated with an all-blue sleeve while maintaining numbers with a uh, drop shadow effect and silver accents. 
Still, this one, this is one of those, oh yeah, this is cool jerseys. So spot number 12 on our list goes to the Chicago Blackhawks. And in describing this jersey, I could also hear these immortal words described by the one and only Slapnuts is Gaming. <clears throat> Attention, Montreal. If you're going to make changes to a classic old uniform, make them worthwhile. <laughs> and yeah, the Blackhawks did so. And they made the league's top dozen with a variation of a white design worn for nearly 20 years across the 30s, the 40s, and 50s. The base color change to black, I think, is uh, very effective. Now this is a great one. Spot number 11 goes to the St. Louis Blues. And this is another team that properly took part in the whole reverse retro fun. Uh, the Blues barely missed the top 10, and I do mean barely, by flipping the red from the bottom of the jersey to the top in a recall to 1995. Now, it wouldn't take much to convince me that this deserves a promotion. Now, if only Wayne Gretzky had stayed for another season. Oh, oh wait, yeah, that's right. We, we, we don't talk about that period of the Great One's career. <laughs> Moving on. All right, welcome to the top 10, folks. Now we start getting into some of the more creme de la creme of the uh, reverse retro jerseys. And here in spot number 10, we got the Los Angeles Kings. And when it comes to blending two distinct eras of a franchise, it's hard to do better than what the Kings pulled off here. I mean, the logo that was just emblematic of the silver and black Gretzky years is retooled with a uh, forum blue and gold color treatment from the team's original designs in the 60s and 70s. And uh, yeah, this one, yeah, this is one of my favorite uh, reverse retros. Spot number nine, we have <sighs> the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> Yes, another original six franchise, another challenging design endeavor, but I'll admit it, the Leafs pull it off with uh, this unique mix of a logo from 6970 and the uh, striping employed a season later. Elsewhere, the use of gray is basically a continuation of the uh, silver that was part of the franchise's uh, Centennial Classic gear in 2017. Spot number eight gives us the Ottawa Senators. Something old, something new. Basically, the Senators employed a bit of both here, blending much of the jersey they wore upon returning to the NHL in 1992 with a striking red base that brings things forward to the franchise's more modern-day rebranding. Spot number seven. Lucky number seven. In this spot, we have the Philadelphia Flyers. So joining the Florida Panthers in mid-1990s nostalgia are the Flyers, who revived the look worn by a team that included the league's MVP in Eric Lindros and won itself an Atlantic Division title and a first seed in the Eastern Conference the next season. However, the Panthers laughed last, beating them in the playoffs. <laughs> and now in spot number six, we have the reigning Stanley Cup champions, the Colorado Avalanche. Now, if you put together a list, and this one was that number one? I, I would have been perfectly content with it. It's basically an ideal blend of the past and present. I mean, 
The Igloo logo and fleur-de-lis were staples of Colorado's predecessors, the Quebec Nordiques. And the fleur-de-lis is in the avalanche's maroon color, and the white base mimics the snow in both locales. Uh, yeah, this, this one, th this is another one of those, like, 100% winner retro jerseys. Welcome to the top five, folks. We kick things off with the Minnesota Wild. So some designs are basically a tweak on what's been done, and others are way better than anything that's preceded it. This is a case of the latter. I mean, the Wild's existing logo gets a makeover with the colors of Minnesota's previous team, the North Stars, in that awesome green and gold. And also, the numbers on the jersey are, are done with the, that drop shadow effect, just giving the whole jersey a super clean look. And that's why this one made it to the top five. So in spot number four, we have the Vegas Golden Knights. And you got to admit, it's a pretty daunting task for a team with fewer than five years of NHL time to fully embrace a reverse retro project. But the Golden Knights pulled it off superbly. Vegas basically honored the uh, minor league teams that preceded them in the desert, including the International League's Las Vegas Thunder in 1995. So as you can see, folks, spot number three goes to the Edmonton Oilers. Now let me just say, boy oh boy, that Gretzky fella sure got around, no? <laughs> well, for those who don't recall, he began his NHL career with the Oilers in 1979. Also, the franchise's first season after moving in from the WHA. And this jersey is actually very similar to what he wore back then. The orange shoulders appear for the first time on a base color of white. Now for spot number two, we got the Winnipeg Jets. The second of two WHA exports, along with Edmonton, still playing in their original cities. Though the first incarnation of the Jets moved to Phoenix years ago, Winnipeg blends looks from its initial 1979 jerseys and updates it with the 21st century Jets colors. And here it is, the spot you've been waiting for, spot number one, and it of course goes to the Carolina Hurricanes. I mean, did someone say WHA? The Hurricanes reach back to one of the sport's all-time great logos and adopt the design of the since-relocated Hartford Whalers from their first NHL run in 1979. The primary gray base is a wonderful blend of the Whalers and Hurricanes in terms of colors. And let's not forget the whale shoulder patch, huh? To, to put it in a uh, lack of a better term, simply the best. So, there you go, folks. My ranking of all 31 original um, Adidas uh, reverse retro jerseys. I hope you enjoyed this. And, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below if, uh, if you'd like to see me uh, tackle the 2022 reverse retro jerseys. All right. So I hope you guys have a great remaining Saturday. Hope you guys have a great remaining weekend. And as I say at the end of every video, folks.